What's up, Extinct Doc crew? Get this. Today, there are over 8 billion of us, Homo sapiens, dominating every corner of the planet, from scorching deserts to concrete jungles. We are the only human species that exists alone at the top. But what if I told you that for hundreds of thousands of years, we shared the Earth with other humans? Species just as intelligent, just as strong, and just as adapted as we were, each with their own culture, technology, and story. They were our family, and today, they are all extinct. What happened to them? Where are the Neanderthals, the Denisovans, the Hobbit of Indonesia, and so many others? Was it us? Was it the climate? Or was it a brutal combination of factors, a perfect storm of events that sealed the fate of everyone but us? This video is going to dive into the greatest mystery of our own existence. Why did only Homo sapiens survive? To not miss anything from this epic investigation into our own lineage, full of shocking discoveries and twists that the latest science is revealing, how about joining our community? Click subscribe and hit the bell. That way, you'll be the first to know all the mysteries Extinct Doc uncovers. Let's go! To understand why we're alone, we first need to imagine a world that wasn't just ours. For hundreds of thousands of years, the Earth was home to multiple human species, all intelligent, all adapted to their environments, and all competing for resources. The most famous? The Neanderthals. Forget the image of the dumb, brutish caveman. The Neanderthals, who lived in Europe and Asia from about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, were elite hunters, adapted to brutal glacial climates with compact bodies to conserve heat and immense physical strength. They had brains as large as ours, mastered fire, created sophisticated tools, the Mosterian technology. And, as indicated by fossils of elderly individuals with healed injuries found at sites like Shanidar Cave in Iraq and La Chapelle aux Saints in France, they took care of each other, demonstrating compassion and complex social structures. A brand new study from January 2024 at the University of Bordeaux, led by Dr. Hélène Dubois, analyzed residue on Mosterian tools, revealing the use of birch bark to create glue, a technology that requires complex abstract thought and multiple production steps. They weren't monsters. They were our incredibly successful cousins. And they weren't the only ones. In 2010, science was taken by complete surprise. The DNA analysis of a tiny finger bone found in Denisova Cave, Siberia, revealed an entirely new human population. The Denisovans are ghost cousins of Asia. What do we know about them? Almost everything comes from their DNA. They split from the Neanderthals over 400,000 years ago and had incredible genetic diversity adapted to a vast range of environments, from the cold mountains of Siberia and the Altai to the high-altitude plateaus of Tibet. And it doesn't stop there. On the island of Flores, Indonesia, we had the small Homo floresiensis, the hobbit, standing only about one meter tall. In the Philippines, in Kalao Cave, Homo luzonensis, with its bizarre mix of primitive and modern traits. And in Africa, in the rising star cave system, Homo naledi, with its small brain but complex behavior, who may have buried its dead. The planet was a mosaic of different types of humanity. All of them were survivors, all were adapted, each in their own way. So what happened? If the world was big enough for so many of us, why all of a sudden was there only one weft? What made us different? What was our secret weapon that allowed us to win this evolutionary race? The answer will surprise you, and it's not about brute force. Our big game changer, our secret weapon, wasn't physical. It was mental. Around 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens underwent a cognitive revolution. This wasn't a sudden change, but a process that gave us a crucial advantage. We didn't just start thinking. We started thinking about things that don't exist in the real world. Myths, gods, stories, tribal identities. 
This ability to create and believe in fictions is what allowed us to cooperate in massive numbers. A Neanderthal could trust their family group of 20 people. A Sapiens could trust thousands of strangers who shared the same story, the same myth, the same group identity. Our cousins lived in small, genetically isolated groups. We created vast and dynamic social networks. A cutting-edge study from September 2023 from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, led by Dr. Jean-Jacques Houblon, analyzed the dispersal of shell beads and obsidian tools over hundreds of kilometers across African and Middle Eastern sites. This proves we had distant friends, alliances, if one group was starving or attacked, it could ask for help from other groups. If a new hunting technique was discovered, the information spread. This network was our insurance policy against extinction, allowing for a genetic and cultural flow that Neanderthals didn't have. We were also masters of adaptation. Neanderthals were specialists, masters of the cold climate and the hunting of large Eurasian animals. We, the Sapiens, were supreme generalists, a true adaptive plague. Where there was desert, we adapted. Where there was rainforest, we adapted. Where there was a coast, we learned to fish and navigate. Our diet was incredibly varied, a true open menu. This flexibility was crucial for our survival. If the mammoths disappeared, a Neanderthal group was in serious trouble. If the rabbits disappeared, a sapiens group would simply go fishing or gather more nuts. So, we were more creative, more social, and more flexible. But when we finally met our cousins in Europe and Asia, what happened? Was it a war of extermination? A peaceful replacement? The truth, revealed by our own DNA, is much more complex and shocking. When Homo sapiens left Africa in their great wave of migration about 60,000 years ago, they didn't find an empty world. They found their cousins. For thousands of years, sapiens and Neanderthals lived alongside each other in Europe and the Middle East, sometimes in the same valleys, the same forests. In Asia, we met the Denisovans. And what happened? The answer is in our blood, literally. Genetic analyses, led by pioneers like Svante Pabo of the Max Planck Institute, proved without a shadow of a doubt that we interbred with them. Many humans today, outside of Africa, carry about 2% Neanderthal DNA. Populations in Melanesia and Southeast Asia carry up to 6% Denisovan DNA. This means it wasn't just war. There was love. There was exchange. There were children. A part of them still lives inside of us, in genes that affect our immune system, our skin, and even our response to diseases. But coexistence wasn't just peaceful. There probably wasn't a genocidal war, like something out of a Hollywood movie. Their extinction was more subtle and more tragic, a matter of ecological competition. We were more numerous, with a slightly higher birth rate, our social networks allowed us to recover from disasters like diseases or harsh winters much faster. Our flexibility allowed us to exploit more resources, from fish to small mammals, while Neanderthals were more focused on large prey. In a competition for a hunting territory, a group of 50 sapiens with a support network would always have an advantage over a group of 15 isolated Neanderthals. Little by little, we were a more efficient, invasive species, taking over the best spots. The killing blow, according to many current studies, was the climate. Europe was experiencing brutal and sudden climate changes, known as Dansgaard, Oschger and Heinrich events. Forests turned into tundras in a matter of generations, and the large herds that Neanderthal hunted disappeared or changed their roots. The Neanderthals, specialists in one type of environment, struggled to adapt to this instability. We, the generalists, simply changed our diet, our tools, and continued to thrive. More resilient. A November 2023 study from the University of Cologne, led by Dr. Michael Stabwasser, 
correlated the last Neanderthal strongholds in places like Gibraltar with periods of extreme climate instability, showing they were pushed to the corners of Europe before they vanished. Little by little, absorbed, outnumbered, and pressured by the climate, our cousins disappeared forever. But what does their story teach us about our own fragility? What does it mean to be the only human on a planet that once hosted so many others? And so, around 40,000 years ago, the last Neanderthal took their final breath. Soon after, the Denisovans and the others were gone too, one by one. From a world full of different humanities, each with its own story, only we remain. We are the sole survivors of an evolutionary experiment that lasted millions of years. And this victory, if we can even call it that, carries an immense weight. Their story is a brutal reminder that intelligence and strength are no guarantee of survival. Adaptability, large-scale cooperation, and maybe a little bit of luck were the keys to our success. They didn't disappear completely. They live on in us, in the 2% of our genome, in the traits that helped us survive in new environments, like adapting to the cold or responding to certain viruses. But their extinction as distinct species is a warning. They were specialists in their world. When the world changed drastically and rapidly, they couldn't keep up. Today, we, Homo sapiens, the supreme generalists, are changing our planet at a speed never seen before. The final question is no longer why did only we survive, but rather how long will we survive? The story of our extinct cousins is not just a mystery of the past, it is a mirror for our own future. It teaches us that no species, no matter how dominant, is guaranteed forever. The resilience and adaptability that brought us here will be the same tools that will need to save us from the changes we ourselves are causing. We are the sole heirs of a legacy of millions of years, and what we do with it is up to us alone. So, did you enjoy this deep dive into the history of our human family? What do you think was the deciding factor for our survival? Our creativity? Our ability to cooperate? Or pure luck? I want to know your opinion. Leave your comment below now. Your engagement is the fuel that drives Extinct Duck to keep unearthing these fascinating truths. If you were blown away by this mystery of evolution and learned something new, smash that like button on this video and share it with everyone who loves a good story about our origins. And of course, if you're not yet part of our tribe and want to keep unraveling the deepest secrets of our past, subscribe to Extinct Duck and hit the bell to not miss any of our next discoveries. Your mind and your curiosity will thank you. Thanks for sticking with us. Until the next adventure.